The arms business is booming like never before. More than 2% of global GDP goes towards military spending each year. With conflicts raging all over the world, companies like Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman are making tens of billions of dollars. Both of those companies are fairly young, being founded in the mid-90s, but some arms businesses are hundreds of years old, one of which is Beretta, an Italian company that for 15 generations has been run by the same family. Since 1650 they have manufactured weapons for every major European war. It remains the oldest privately owned company still in operation. This is the story of Beretta, from its establishment in Renaissance Italy to its handguns being adopted by the United States Army. In the early 16th century, Bartolomeo Beretta established a gun foundry in the town of Gardone. By all accounts, he was a master of his craft. In fact, his nickname was the Master of Pipes. Bartolomeo specialised in producing gun barrels, and he must have had quite a reputation as he was commissioned by the Republic of Venice. At the time, Italy was not one united nation, but a collection of smaller states. The Italian states were not equal. Some were big like the Kingdom of Naples. Others were tiny and relatively weak like San Marino. Over time a handful of states dominated and conquered those around them. Arguably the most powerful of all was the Republic of Venice. It sounds odd to say that now as Venice today is just one city, but at one point it had an empire with lands in the Balkans, Greece and Cyprus. This gave it a series of important ports and docks, on which it could build a sophisticated trade network. These trade links made Venice vastly wealthy, and gave rise to one of the world's greatest seafaring cultures. Many successful explorers were Venetian, and the Republic maintained a strong navy. But all this success gave powerful enemies to Venice. It was thanks to these enemies that Beretta grew strong, providing Venice with weapons for many battles. In time, the Beretta name became synonymous with high-quality guns, and so they weren't exactly lacking business opportunities. Coming centuries would see ownership of a company and knowledge of the craft passed from father to son. They crafted guns for some of history's most notorious rulers, including Henry VIII, Napoleon, Adolf Hitler, and countless warlords. Every European in pursuit of power wanted Beretta on their side. For Napoleon, they produced more than 30,000 muskets per year. They kind of backed the wrong horse though, and the next few years saw a dry spell for the company, so they resorted to making hunting and sporting rifles, catering to the nobility of Europe, who loved to hunt, and were willing to pay big money to do so. Yet Beretta continued to innovate, and by the outbreak of World War I, they were producing sophisticated military weapons. This was highly unusual for an Italian company, hence why the Italian military was so badly equipped in both world wars. Their weapons may have well have been made of cheese, or bread. Bread would have been more effective, unless it was really hard cheese like that Danish stuff. But anyway, during World War II, Beretta was among the most prolific arms producers for Axis powers. This saw them produce a range of rifle for Imperial Japan. In 1938 and 1939, 80,000 Type 1 rifles were created and sent to Japan by submarine. With Japan's defeat, many Type 1 rifles were taken home as war trophies by American soldiers. This was the first time many US soldiers had ever heard of Beretta, but it would not be the last. From the start, Beretta was one of the most respected gun brands of the Cold War, specifically making weapons for police and special forces. It's no coincidence that in the first James Bond novel, a Beretta pistol was his issued weapon. It was the 418 Beretta, Bond's favourite gun. Small and compact, it was perfect for espionage, but not everyone agreed. One angry reader sent author Ian Fleming a letter about how the 418 was a lady's gun. He suggested Bond use a water pistol instead. Fleming actually took on this criticism, and in the sixth novel, Bond is issued with a Walter PPK, the same model Hitler shot himself with. But for the first five books, Beretta got great publicity from James Bond. Taking advantage of their Cold War prestige, they expanded internationally, establishing Beretta USA in 1972. Today, more than half of their business comes from America. 
As gun laws cut into the market in other countries, the US market became ever more important, and Beretta put increasing focus on America. In 1985, the Beretta 92 became the standard service pistol of the US Army. From then on, it was known simply as the M9. It was only in 2017 that the Army announced a new standard pistol, made by a different company. Known as the M17, it is gradually being phased in. Interestingly, it's made by the company that narrowly lost out to Beretta in 1985. Despite this loss, I don't think Beretta will be struggling. Today, Beretta owns 26 brands and companies under the banner of their parent company, Beretta Holding. They even have their own museum in Italy, inside which you can see the car Beretta once made. I'm not joking, they've really made a car in the 1940s. Seeing Italian car companies like Maserati and Ferrari make big money, they decided to enter the industry. Beretta was, after all, one of Italy's best-known brands. So they created this small red car. In many ways, it was typical of post-war cars, both in style and function, with a top speed of 63 miles per hour. It was a nice little car, but not nice enough to beat out competition. In the end, Beretta just wasn't meant for this industry. Coincidentally, Chevrolet named a car after Beretta in 1987, causing Beretta to sue them for trademark infringement. Beretta also make wine, so I guess all their products kill people. Apart from binoculars, they own a company that does them too. Beretta is far from your average gun company. Its age, its diversification of business interest, and the strange characters behind it make her different. That's why I wanted to make this video. Almost all of us have heard the name Beretta, but few know anything about its history. So if this seems like a strangely specific video, that's why. I might do more videos on other businesses I find interesting, so let me know if you want that. But for now, thanks for watching my video on Beretta, the 500 year old gun company. Well, I say 500, it's actually 492, but that's close enough. Shut up. Just a quick update I'm changing the name of this channel from Buzzard Post to Wistman. It's a long story, but listen, I'm going to be uploading more regularly to this channel, so be sure to hit the notification bell.